Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Austin Cummings, along with my co-host, Danny Tortelli. Hey, 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 Austin. Hey, all. Hey, hey, uh, Danny, we have some exciting news today in the Nintendo sphere, so we knew we had to get on here, talk about it on A&P, and really kind of process where we're at with this as we look at it as fans and consumers and brand advocates, and also um, just, you know, get that sweet content out there. So, Danny, tell me a little bit about the news of the day. Yeah, so today, y'all, we got the surprise announcement as some of us were rolling out of bed, some of us were still dead asleep. Um, the Switch OLED model, the actual name, uh, oh, will be launching beautiful. this October. Yes, <laughs> okay. not, not new Nintendo Switch, not Switch XL, not Switch Pro. Switch yeah, okay, OLED. Okay, so now we have to kind of... First, let's reckon with that. Let's reckon with the name. Because we really don't have that much to go on on all this, so we're going to have to get into the minutia. But, okay, so we've long mocked, right? Nintendo has a crazy naming scheme for their uh, stuff. Well, so us on this show? No way. I know. And so for <laughs> the... We have our new, of course, Nintendo 3DS and 3DS XL, a new Nintendo 2DS XL. And those names, pr- probably confusing, especially to the average consumer. Uh, to some degree, this name is pretty clear in that it's really no fuss. Do we applaud it or do we hate it? It's a tough one. You know, are, are we individuals of our word? Probably not. It does seem awfully underwhelming now reading it as Nintendo Switch OLED model. That's the name. Not a lot of pizzazz there. Yeah, name alone, not a fan. Okay, not a fan. What what have you opted for? Because you don't want to oversell it. That's like the concern, right? Because now right. Bloomberg had reported previously that uh, yes. heading into E3, right, which was last month, the rumor was that Nintendo was going to announce a Switch Pro, the long chatted about on this very podcast and many corners of the web, going to release a Switch that could output at least 4K or would output 4K in the TV mode and possibly leverage NVIDIA's DLSS, which is a a deep learning system in that it takes the resolution of a given image and uses like the upcoming and previous frame to basically uh, try and create the appearance of a tighter resolution by this learning algorithm. In any event, um, that is not a part of this. This is just a Nintendo Switch model that has a nice screen that is uh, now seven inches wide, uh, opposed to 6.2, so it's a little wider. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. do you, you don't want to oversell it. So what would be another name? that jumps out at you what would be even like an appropriate stand-in it's it's tough because like hardware wise it is i would like everything else feels like new nintendo switch would make sense right but on like the processing side of things it's still not it's still the exact same processor still the same amount exactly exactly you're not we're not getting any more power out of this we're not getting any more frame rates out of this no, um, no. So, like, if it was just the aesthetics and some of the other hardware features, which I do think are nice improvements, um, I feel like new still makes sense. But, but this just—it it sounds like they—they know they're only selling you on really one big new feature. <laughs> For sure. Screen, and it does feel naming it right there. <laughs> it does feel honest. I mean, even more so. Like, I've liked Microsoft's naming, and like PlayStation's naming has been very clear. But I've liked yeah. what Microsoft has done. Like, I like the S and X uh, naming, kind of sports car-ish. Of course, we have that in the iPhones. You could name this, but even those are... Okay, so when you go for the Xbox One to the Xbox One S, they are effectively very similar guts and, you know, machine, but the S was like a sleeker f- form factor. This is kind of close to that. I think you could have gotten away with like Nintendo Switch S or something along those lines. Um, mm. Something, yeah, that invoked that maybe that kind of race car naming or Apple naming, but... For what it's worth, it is it is honest, and I do appreciate that. I'm glad it is not called the Switch Pro. I'm glad it's not called the Super Nintendo Switch. Because uh, then mm-hmm. I think people... This does leave the door open uh, and keeps the madness a, a rolling as far as speculation about could the Switch Pro still exist, and this is like a stopgap. But, um, but we'll get to that. So, Danny... Okay, we're medium on the name, but go ahead and tell me, what are what are we looking at as far as the specs on this yeah. thing. 
So we're bumping from a 6.2 screen, I think, on the original Switch and the slightly revised one from 2019 to a full 7 inch. Still 720p. Um, we are going OLED, as we mentioned. Yes, still handheld. Um, apparently improved audio. Not really still clear on what that means. <laughs> Not clear on what's that. And we know we have, yeah, go ahead. I mean, kind of a stereo setup on the Switch with the you know, speakers yeah. on either side. Probably just like, yeah. you know, whatever little speakers in there is just a little newer but it's not there's no details on that there's no word of like any type of bluetooth connectivity which matt was definitely not thrilled about understandably he had every right to be as yeah, viscerally matt, angry matt. as he was yeah matt big, big fan of the show not fan of the the switch audio <laughs> setup yeah right but uh yeah no so it's likely just to be slightly improved little speakers although i never had a of, of all the things on the Switch, I always thought those were great. I was like, for a handheld console, that thing sounds amazing as is, but I'll take improvement wherever. Yeah, um, I agree, especially because the 2DS, yeah. the, the, the new Nintendo 2DS XL, which was the handheld that preceded the Switch, um, had pr- pretty poor speakers, and they were located right at the bottom of the unit, so when you held it, or if you had it like uh, resting on you, laying, if you were to be laying down playing this, the... Uh, it definitely now it's lying down that's what i wish should have said right it's lying down because you lay like a hen lays an egg but we lie down i believe that's correct you are our credentials for journalism were already this thin <laughs> right pretty thin. And now we're, we are pretty we're good journalists. Thin ice here <laughs> <laughs> the, um, in any event but yeah you would really uh, occlude any hope of hearing it so i agree with you the speakers were pretty nice it is nice that they're improved but it's certainly not a selling point it's not called the nintendo switch slightly better speaker model so we have to know where they're really positioning it okay and then the right. other things danny to finish off at, or or you mentioned it anything notable yeah yeah we have in the uh on, oh on the switch itself again kickstand greatly improved this is truly even just watching the demo video which you shall do looks like they completely aped the uh the design uh language from the surface products surface pro mm-hmm. and such mm-hmm. um looks just like it has the same almost infinity angles you know a kind of thing that you can adjust it to which is amazing but at the same time it's one of those why was that not in the original switch in 2017 it's not we didn't we didn't just land something on the moon kind of rocket Mm -hmm. science but we Mm -hmm. also like you know it was just like oh that that seems like it was easier than probably it (laughs) should have been this probably didn't have to be so bad this whole time yeah i do agree but i will say as coming from someone who enjoys the Xbox, you know, family of consoles, it's nice to see Microsoft get ripped off every once in a while. You know, all these things are always like, oh, we're taking stuff from Apple with every type of naming yeah, and yeah. color and, you know, uh, the design, the feel of the Nintendo stuff. It's nice to see them just, hey, this time, you know, Microsoft, you got something right and it's ours now. And that's kind of refreshing to see. <laughs> it's Microsoft and Nintendo continuing to play nice together. Yeah, oh, oh um, that's it. Yeah, yeah, The The yeah. web, the web deepens. Right, right. So... Elsewhere, um, Joy-Cons are still the same, so anyone who's thinking for improved internals and those things, we're going to keep waiting. Um, the dock, a little sleeker. Um, actually, it looks very, very handsome, the new dock. Um, Thank you. And it, yeah, yeah, I know you made it. You were very much involved in design, so <laughs> wow. we appreciate your work. I don't mean to brag. Um, yeah, it has a LAN Ethernet port, so no longer the need for a USB adapter. Um and that's about it for the dock. I mean, other than just some like slightly rounded corners and stuff like that, and just looking a little bit more, um, yeah, just sleek is the best way to put it. Um, I think did, that's did the it, biggest it, change in the dock. Does it still have a USB A inside the dock, or is that just totally swapped so out with the Ethernet? That is my understanding is it's replaced um, because there's yes, there's still a USB C, there's the HDMI, and now what in the original dock was a USB A is now just the Ethernet LAN adapter. Um, which I think for most people is going to be fine. Um, I know for, for myself and my roommate who we play a lot of Switch with, we usually just use the two on the outside, which will still remain in the new dock, um, mostly for the the, um, the uh, GameCube controller adapter for Smash. Um, but like that third USB-A inside, I, I guess for folks who already bought the adapter for their Ethernet cord, that's what they used it for, but no, no more port. One less middleman for your streamlined yeah, it, internet connection. It probably is nice. I mean, the one thing I will say is, like, I definitely have this set up for most of the time of the Switch. Is like, the front port that requires the two USB was for the GameCube adapter for Smash Brothers. And then the one that was more internal on the dock I had utilized for, like, my 
USB A to USB C charging cord for the Pro controller. So mm -hmm. that would be something you are losing out in this. However, like you know, the, even that setup assumes like you're serious about playing Smash Brothers. And if you are serious about playing Smash Brothers, you will ultimately get more out of having like the dedicated Ethernet port if you're trying to actually play that online. So right. probably, I, right. yeah, a worthy change ultimately. But uh, yeah, um, as far as other hardware stuff, um, nothing else. Uh, that's really the big, big changes. Um, handsome, handsome black and white designs. Uh, another thing where it's like, Love it. Where was this three years ago? But I'm still intrigued just by that color scheme. It's, it's something we've talked about on the pod before, but it definitely is that phenomenon where because the switch, you know, had initially was gray, kind of the black gray. Uh, now the white one really jumps out. But if it were reversed, if it came out white, you'd be crazy for the black one. Like it's just always that way. Like the, you know, the PS5. It's the one you haven't white. had yet. Exactly. And then the, the, but then the black controller comes out for the dual sense. It's like, oh, it looks so sharp, even though it's, you know, the PS4 and 3 were both black. Um, so yes, but still, it definitely looks great in the white. It's fun that it comes out in October alongside Metroid Dread, which also has like a similar color scheme in that, you know, mm -hmm. Samus's suit is fairly white as are the Emmy robots. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of like a fun little pairing there, but, uh, yeah, oh, it is yeah. neat. Okay. Question for you then, Danny, do you think there is any chance that with the ethernet port being dedicated that there's any type of signaling there as to Nintendo's internet plans, or is it really just a... Like, do you think this, for instance, we have the games such as Control, mm -hmm. Resident Evil, Hitman 3 that are like the streaming only games. You know, is there any thought on Nintendo's end where it's like, oh, we're going to really kind of bolster our streaming options. And as such, we want to make sure everyone who buys a Switch from here on out can get like a better experience. I think probably so it's, not. It's probably overrating it, but we're... It, it, possibly is always the answer with Nintendo. Maybe someday is always the answer too. There's the recent investor call and the president, and I'm going to get his name wrong, um, I think it's Shuntaro Furukawa, I think is the president of Nintendo, if I got the right person. Um, and someone was asking him about like, you know, separate from revised hardware, what about Switch Online? You know, folks were hoping for either more options as far as games or more uh, concrete stability and just server uh, horsepower, things like that. And it was one of those kind of marketing, he's definitely talked to his PR team before this sort of answer is like, we are always looking for ways to improve our online service uh, and right. stay tuned, essentially. It's so, good to hear. Right, so it's like maybe that's something where they're like, we really encourage you, if you want the best online performance, please plug in to an Ethernet, you know, uh, LAN right. connection. You do, and it, yeah. Yeah. And then, say, and then if you do, yeah. you get some sort of improvement. But go ahead, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, you do wonder because the fact that the Switch, the Switch does not have any up, you know, update as far as really processing power, which is really the thing to, you know, to talk about as far as the, uh, uh, as far as the Switch and the guts therein. The thing we talk about with games such as the Musou style games with Hyrule Warriors and games that have a lot of enemies on screen, their frame rate really suffers because the Switch's performance is just can't quite hang, you know, even just from a CPU level. And so the hope was that that would be maybe upped with this. Still, we have room for a Super Switch style thing. Um, Nintendo was also wild enough that just in the same way that in 2019, we got the Switch Lite pretty close to off the back of the revision of the Nintendo Switch with the better battery. You never know, we could end up with, you know, we had the 3DS new, Nintendo 3DS XL and the new Nintendo 3DS launched at least internationally um, the same time too. So it wouldn't be the first time they've done like multiple SKUs of slightly different products, but um, it does, this definitely feels like the thing we were going to get at least for this year. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you never quite know, but the, but you do wonder like, because there's no performance upgrade on board, is there going to be a little more, is that signaling Nintendo's plan where it's like, hey, we're not really going to change the guts of the Switch, they don't want to fracture the market between like, oh, only compatible with this or that, but their solution is to lean more on these games that are on streaming services as the Switch can't keep up on the hardware end. Um, it seems like, it's, I was talking to a buddy about this recently, but you know, especially when there are things like Stadia out there, even though that mm -hmm. you know hasn't lit the world on fire in a positive way, but at the same time, the it's still like a solid enough service. So it's like if I wanted to play games that I wanted to stream, I would certainly much 
more readily utilize Google's platform than Nintendo's very shaky, limited online service for games like Control or Hitman 3. So, yeah, you wonder if that's more of a plan. I kind of doubt it, but it is interesting to see with the Ethernet port. Yeah, maybe that's the trade-off with Microsoft, right? They're like, hey, can we borrow your patents for a kickstand, and in return, uh, we'll borrow your xCloud technology, and you put Game Pass on the Switch. Honestly, that is not... <laughs> totally kidding. I don't want to feed like those flames anymore. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but frankly, if they did do something like that where, hey, we're just trying to focus the Switch a little more to have more robust online capabilities moving forward because the future is streaming content, and maybe that also includes Game Pass, that would be amazing. But, of course, uh, certainly remains to be seen. In a big way. Right. Um, right. The, uh, so we've already mentioned it. There's no big hardware jump. So we're really just looking at a slightly larger screen that is OLED. I think it'll be interesting to see um, what it really looks like, you know, side by side. Uh, I know that, like, for mm. the PlayStation Vita, the first model had the OLED screen. And it was quite nice compared to the LCD screen of the second gen. And I think right now the, the temperature is pretty cool, I feel like, on this whole thing uh, online. Just people mm -hmm. a little bit you know feel misled not that it was really nintendo's doing about like thinking there was going to be a you know a, just a yes a the pro. stronger switch a pro version yeah. uh yeah. but i would say i am excited about it always excited about a new handheld thing and i do like the idea because i play in handheld all the time having Something with the OLED screen is exciting. And also, it's just a fun Nintendo toy. And also, did you see that box? It has the fun vertical box. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's oh, great yeah. to see. For sure. No, and same. And I think about it, especially this past year, um, I was living remotely out of town, not in my apartment with the dock. Um, so whenever I do game night with the guys, it was handheld. And to think, like, both what would a bigger screen and that truly much better kickstand would have done for when I'm just trying to kick it somewhere comfortable like in my bed or on a uh, chair or whatever um handheld that would have been eons better um, yeah this this so does those, kind of recontextualize yeah. the tabletop mode because the kickstand was you, you were always kind of uh, gambling the safety of the switch every time you were using the kickstand of the normal oh, yeah. model so or we're all buying these peripherals like this which i still yeah. use for like my smartphone and sometimes for my yeah. switch but it's like we're all spending all this excess money on this other thing to make up for it. For sure. Even Nintendo sold like a little charger that hooked on USB-C at the end that you could then prop it up. Yeah, so it is fun. that. And again, yeah, I vastly, 98% of the time, play the Switch handheld. So to have it better, mm -hmm. that's great. I will say, so we're talking with Matt and Jordan about this. They can't be on now just to kind of express their thoughts. You know, something that Matt expressed, which I think is very true. You know, I have loved the Switch Lite. It has a great form factor it feels compact and really solid because there aren't the detachable joy-con element uh the thing you do lose out with it would be the battery life is is worse than the normal switch and you notice that and also the uh the lack of rumble is is a bummer but um i yeah. really have liked the switch light but this is definitely the better handheld option but i still love on the switch light like the d-pad and the dedicated mm. elements of and again the sturdiness and the kind of throw it in the backpack factor but and as jordan had said you know you know matt's excited for this he intends to get it jordan also recognizes that it's mainly used as this is really for the handheld folks and that you know that is definitely me i'm definitely excited for this but i do wish it had um at least i, I will if nothing else i'll feel sad to lose the form factor of the switch light and the the d-pad it will be worth it for the battery and for um yeah, for the OLED screen. But I, uh, yeah. and we're saying battery not any better than the normal Switch model, the like upgraded battery from 2019. It's the same, but it's still yeah. a couple hours more than the Switch Lite is with that, that comparison. I will say, I am ultimately glad that they did not opt to change the Joy-Con for this, uh, just because there are a lot of great looking Joy-Con out there. They've been pretty selective mm -hmm. about the ones that have been special edition, like the Animal Crossing Joy-Con are so beautiful. And I'm really excited for the Skyward Sword Joy-Con that come out just this month. Yes. And so it yes. would be a bummer if this new one came out with... I also find the Joy-Con to be comfortable. Really, their flaw is the drift, certainly. Um, so that is the thing they kind of can't get away from without seemingly really redesigning these. But I am glad, um, especially for like the streamlined 
continued use of the peripherals that I already have and cases because the switch also though it has a bigger screen worth mentioning it is not any larger it is just that the bez bezels on the switch have been reduced so I like mm -hmm. that about it as well um, yeah overall mm -hmm. good option for the handheld a pretty small upgrade I have a little game for you prepared Danny but before we get to that do you have any other thoughts on the yeah. Nintendo Switch OLED model? The only other thing I wanted to throw out there, as we've we've mentioned in podcasts before, especially this past year, just trying to bring uh, awareness to various uh, groups within the gaming world that like you know, try to maybe underrepresented and try to speak up for them more, is I saw someone, oh, and I forget their name. I follow them on Twitter religiously. Um, they, they refer to themselves as the blind gamer, as they are partially blind. Hi, this is Austin in post saying that that blind gamer is Steve Saylor. That last name is S-A-Y-L-O-R at Steve Saylor on Twitter. And they were talking about the news today and they said the combination of the slightly bigger screen and OLED with a higher contrast ratio goes a long way for people who have vision issues who are trying to do more handheld games. And they said, you know, you all can be mad about uh, the no pro things, that's fine, but please know that this is actually a huge boost for a lot of um, those of us similar to me who are struggling with uh, these types of vision issues. So I just want to shout that out, that like we can be upset, and I you know, definitely have my things that I'm upset about that weren't in this announcement today, but there are a lot of huge positives in, in what came out of it today. Um, and I'll have to, who is their account? I'll have to find it and, and share it in the show before we end. Um, but I really like that take, and that's something to keep in mind. Because we know Nintendo, especially compared to something like Xbox, sometimes struggles with accessibility stuff. So this, whether they planned it or not, this was a good first step, if nothing else, or something like that. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, that's a good a good point. And also, you know, when they first came out with the Nintendo DS uh, XL or DSi XL in 2009, you know, that was one that was mm -hmm. marketed a bit towards the popularity of uh, games like Brain Age and then older population, you know, using especially in a time that was still before really everyone had a smartphone. It was still like, oh, this is this fun touchscreen interface with these kind of mini games, something there before the app store. And hey, if you are you know, somebody who has a harder time seeing or an older person who has a harder time even just touching the icons on the screen, clearly, uh, this also does help in that sense. It's a clearer, larger screen. So that's a good point, Danny. And yeah. a good point by yeah. that Twitter account. Okay, yeah. here's our game. The, our game is gonna be this. It. So uh, it's very simple. The, we're running it down. I'm going to propose um, a Nintendo handheld upgrade that has happened in the past. And you are to tell us whether or not that was better. That's now the name of the game. So the way it's gonna work is this. I'll say the, the thing and you'll say like, oh, that handheld upgrade was better than this one. So it's either it was better or it was mm. not, all right? So if this Ooh, one is equally oh good, if this one is equally good to this uh, hardware iteration that I list for you, then it was not better, right? And they might be the same level of good oh, or maybe the Switch one is better. Okay. But, so, so it has to be greater than equal, but not equal. <laughs> greater than yes. equal. And only just to get the yeah. temperature on how you're feeling about the OLED model. Certainly there's you know, sure. no right or wrong. But Nintendo has a long sure. history of upgrading these hard this hardware. Most of the time it's largely this style of cosmetic things like we're seeing with the OLED model. So yeah. here we go. Let us begin. Okay, in 1989, Nintendo had the Game Boy. Of course, revolutionized the handheld market as designed by Gunpo Gunpei Yokoi in a way to get an affordable, durable handheld in front of many gamers at the expense of something that was technologically more impressive. The launch of the Game Boy, 1989. The first revision that it really received in handheld form was in 1996 with the Game Boy Pocket. So, was Game Boy to Game Boy Pocket was that was that better than this change? I'm going to say no. Okay. And, it, mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say functionally, the only thing different was its size. Mm -hmm. It did nothing else different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're going to say that was not not better. What about Game Boy Light? This one didn't come to America, oh. but in 1998, it was a pocket with a backlight or a front light. Really, okay. it was front light. But okay, so. What would you say? Was that better? 
And I'm going to say, and we're still comparing this to the OG Game Boy? We're now going to compare, we're just going to compare, yeah. Oh, no, actually, to, good, good point for the game. We'll compare it to yeah. going from the pocket, from the thing that came before it. Ah, so we'll always, we'll always use whatever that most recent one was prior is the new base. Yeah. I'm still going to say, I'm still, yeah, yeah. I'm still going to say not better. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I'm, 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 I'm saving, or I'm going to say that was not better than this is. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. next up the Game Boy Color was there better than the Game Boy Light or, you know, those that came before. I would say that was better. Are we in agreement on that? I was gonna say, I would say that now changes it because now we're just <laughs> yeah. going from oh we made it more compact, but it's literally the same thing to now it's here is a whole new feature that folks did not because um, not only just Nintendo but other I think um, gaming companies that were trying to start out around the time of the Game Boy they were all kind of that black and white or black and whatever was you know green yellow kind of thing um, so any sort of you know. Going to full color um, is huge. That's a, so that that is bigger than the that old is, Switch. I agree. I agree. And and even the Game Boy Color, you know, could play games that were not possible to play on the original Game Boy. That the you know the cart itself was required mm-hmm. more out of the machine. And the Game Boy Color had games like Link's Awakening DX it. and things that yeah yeah or Shantae things that would not run on the original. So it you know had a little more horsepower there. Okay. Now we're jumping forward. In 2001, Nintendo had the Game Boy Advance, our 32-bit console. It came normally in this rectangular uh, little little beauty. So that was the 2001 Game Boy Advance. Uh, no backlight or front light. And the uh, console itself had was, in many ways, a very similar form factor to the Switch in handheld mode. Um, but then, in 2003, came the Game Boy Advance SP clamshell design with the front light initially was it was that better than this i'm gonna say the original game boy advance yes the clamshell yeah. i was gonna say no only because it it was just a different form factor but i don't think it added to my knowledge i don't think it added more power no, or any did. other it sort did. of feature but the was light was more a, kind of like it did have the light which was yeah. you know quite the game changer and that you didn't have to you know play yeah. by angled street light all the time in the car but <laughs> would be um <laughs> And it could charge, which was also nice. It got away from the AA batteries. But yeah, I'll say that, that was a true, yeah. that was a big one. But when compared to the Game Boy Micro, which was the very teeny version of the Game Boy Advance, that was the form factor more like the Game Boy. Um, I will say that I'm going to say that Game Boy Micro was beautiful. I do not own one. It is a big rag red of mine. I- but. But my question specifically would be the DS Lite versus that of the Nintendo DS. So when going, um, when you had the light model, so it was much smaller and a much mm-hmm. brighter backlight and not fugly anymore, like the original Nintendo DS. So was that better than what we're getting now I'm, as far as a bigger jump? I'm going to say no then. Okay. And you're yeah, going to walk through the regular. Yeah, yeah. and you're. And you're gonna say because same thing, just kind of cosmetic style. Yeah, at that point, compared to the regular DS, uh, yeah, no, it's it's mostly just cosmetic stuff. Yeah, that's kind of my yeah. argument. I, I will say that like the original Nintendo DS was suffering so badly cosmetically that it felt like a very big jump to go to the light. Whereas like the Switch already looks good, and the Switch OLED doesn't look that different. So yeah, um, that is something. But as far as core functionality. Definitely agreed. Okay, the last one we're going to use as an example. We're going to now look, comparing us now from the Nintendo 3DS in 2011 with stereoscopic 3D, and then moving Mm. to the new Nintendo 3DS, which had the C-Stick, slightly better processor, but rarely used. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, would we... Was that better? I'm... I'm going to say no. I think it's about the same because okay. so yeah, I remember like, that was yeah, the first. Yeah, that was I had taken a break from video games for years, you know, during the college years and immediately after. And that was the first gaming system I got um, when I was slowly getting back into video games. And I remember just looking at some tech reviews and everything. And everyone's like, the processing really isn't that much more like it, it yeah. is, but it's not. The screen is actually, they said, in a lot of ways, less 
Um, the colors were a little less saturated and it was <laughs> they a little did, less bright. They did change um, from like I, IPS to uh, T, TCN. Wait, I had to look that up. But uh, they ch- did change yeah. the make of the screen and it actually was not quite as nice. But yes, overall. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So, you know, I would feel just a point of comparison for some of these I think for me, even when it's just cosmetic, if the thing that came before was in such dire need of a refresh, it felt like a bigger deal. So even, we didn't do this one, but like 3DS to 3DS XL, it's just a more dramatic version of what we're seeing now with the OLED screen, which is slightly more screen and nothing really that different. However, like the original 3DS form factor was pretty fugly once again. It was this kind of cake layer design, not very attractive and small it did not feel very nice it was also very expensive and then the xl was uh, less expensive than the 3ds had launched at and also had a bigger screen i think i feel that way about i think the jump to the xl for the 3ds family and probably the jump to light for nintendo ds but the dsi even though it was also kind of like the new nintendo 3ds devices it was technically more powerful but you really didn't feel that in any of the games so it it felt kind of like a wash. There wasn't any reason to tell someone that they should get yeah. a DSi or really a new Nintendo 3DS XL versus the XL. But I did feel like it was warranted to say, oh, I definitely get the XL over yeah. the Ridge. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I think that um, I think it's a good perspective, Danny. And I think that it does hi- highlight on these that Nintendo really does not have a history of ever doing anything uh, that drastic. <laughs> drastic on any of these. They're all pretty... Yeah. All pretty much shades of the same incremental decision. So, in any event, that yeah. was our game. Uh, that it is it. What was that better? Thank you for uh, playing along. Okay, Danny. Before we close out this episode, you have been really crushing it on our social media front. We really appreciate it at the at and p yeah. podcast on Twitter. And occasionally we get like a fun, a really fun like by internet celebs who are liking something you've replied to, which is so thrilling. Um, and you follow interesting folks. What are, what's the, uh, what's the scene looking like there on Twitter? Yeah. I mean, it's, we're, we're, we're humble beginnings, right? Um, I think we got our first certified follower, uh, like wow. a verified follower, whatever it's yeah. called. Um, Richie, the drift God, Richie Branson. Um, thank you, Richie. Their musician yeah, big, and, yeah. Big thanks. Musician and game designer, um, who's worked on adult swim with Toonami with rooster teeth. Um, big in podcasting and all that good stuff. Um, so Richie's a follower of us. Um, <laughs> you know, I follow um, quite a few people across the industry with with this uh, account. Uh, Patricia Hernandez, mm-hmm. formerly at Polygon, is now the editor in chief uh, for Kotaku. If I'm not yep. mistaken. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think she's back at Kotaku. It's like once upon a time she was at Kotaku, then to Polygon, and then yes. Anyway. Yes. Awesome. And now she's leading Kotaku. Yeah. Um, Greg Miller, kind of funny. Um, the whole kind of funny family, I think everybody should follow because they are they are funny. Um, but it's just a very positive and enjoyable and fun-loving community. Um, Absolutely. So he, he's liked a couple of our stuff too. Definitely worth yeah, checking that out. Yeah, that was exciting. When I had the Twitter alerts and then yeah. like Greg Miller liked to tweet, wow, very fun. Those are like is, high, he's been, big he's been around the industry, you know. Um, he's <laughs> For sure. One of the... One of the uh, uh, big guys from IGN back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. I think he started a couple of the shows that they still do now. Yeah, definitely um, Podcast Beyond and, and he's, was started by him and yeah. he was kind of in there early at... I think well, I, I guess think Beyond he was on well. early on. Definitely. Definitely yeah. up at noon was he and yeah. Brian had done that. And, and I guess that's right. He, he didn't start Podcast Beyond but really made it what it was and uh, same thing kind of goes for Game Scoop. But, and I had one time had chicken and waffles with him which is like a, just a fun fact. Um so that's just like my fun, my Wait, fun lore. We're gonna make a whole segment about how you like all my tweets, <laughs> but, but you're gonna throw out here that you had chicken and waffles with him. We, we can't just let that he's only got He's only gotten bigger. <laughs> so um, that's just like my fun touch. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well, well yeah. I'm sure they'll DM him the and tell him to talk. follow us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're we're tight. <laughs> we're ready to. Yeah, he's ready to throw a favor in. He was already doing a big favor that yeah. day. In any event. Um, yeah, seriously. And then, do we have? Do we? Can we find quickly the Twitter handle for the blind, the blind gamer oh, account so we can give them a plug? Um, so there's two uh, gamers that I recommend following for, especially when it comes to accessibility um, for for disabled gamers um, or for differently able gamers. 
So this first one, and it's not the one I was thinking of, but the first one in the meantime, which is another good one to follow, Stephen Spawn, um, S-P-O-H-N, um, and it's just his name, at Stephen Spawn. So that's one. Um, he's awesome. He's hilarious. And he also posts like really kind of like uplifting questions at the end of each day. He's like, well, you know, stuff like, what's gotten you through the day? What's something that's really make you, if you could change your industry, what would you do? What's a fun thing? So he's just awesome. Um, and then this other one, it's going to, it's going to stump me and I can't find it in my quick cursory little search. Um, what is his name? He was just on kind of funny too. We'll put it in the, you know, we'll put it in the description. Yeah. But thank you, whoever you are, the blind gamer, as you refer to yourself. Uh, I really appreciated your insight today. That was that was huge when I was kind of in my darn you Nintendo mode. So uh, yeah, that no, good. that's that is a really great perspective. And thank, yeah, thank you to him for bringing it up, and Danny, thank you for mentioning it and uh, recognizing it. So I think that'll this is a good quick episode. That's gonna that's gonna end it here. But thank you so much for listening. Uh, I've been Austin Cummings, and this has been also oh Danny Tortelli. Very good. And Goodbye, Matt and Jordan. We miss you. We miss you. Come back safe. Uh, until next time, this has been another Nintendo Podcast. Bye.